Hello everyone and welcome back to the placement system series. It's been a long time I know, but I'm back at this and this will probably be one of the last tutorials actually. So anyway, what are we going to be doing in this video? Well, we are going to be making the snapping system even better and we're also going to learn how to improve like making objects and plots and how to set it up for our placement system. So let's get right into doing that and yeah. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is obviously open up our placement handler script. And the first thing I want to do is I actually want to change this calculate item position function so that it actually returns value instead of just setting variables. It's a little bit easier to work with and it's just a better idea to do. So instead of having this really long line here doing some of the calculations, I want it to happen always in here, just entirely in there. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to get rid of this and we can just replace this with calculate item position. That's all we have to do. Then we can just go ahead and return a C frame. Although we're not going to return anything yet because we're going to create a variable for that. So we're going to create up here local final C frame is equal to, uh, we're not going to set it to anything just yet, but we are going to return that variable. Okay, so another thing that we're going to do is we're going to create a few more variables. So we're going to create local x and z, and we're also going to create offsets for those values. So local offset x and offset z, and those are just going to be set to nothing currently. Another variable we're going to have to declare up here is going to be called local rotation val, and this is going to be set to false right now. Now what we can do is we can say if rotation val true, then do this, else we're going to do this. Now I'll explain what this is going to do, but essentially what's going to happen is it's going to be when you rotate it, we're going to uh, have different offsets to correctly rotate the object and keep it snapped in the grid. But I'll show you, I'll kind of go over that after. Um, so we're not going to actually worry about this yet. Uh, what we're actually going to do now is set this just to an empty C frame. So C frame, we can just do this empty C frame zero, zero, zero. And then instead of actually working on this right now, I want to get the grid displayed on the plot. So let's go and do that up here. We can create a new function, which is going to be called local function. And then we can call this render grid. Okay. And then we can create a new grid texture. So we're going to say local texture equals instance dot new. And then we can set this to a texture and we can set the texture dot studs per tile U equal to grid size and then texture dot studs per tile V to grid size. And then another thing we can do is obviously set the texture to grid texture, which is our setting up here where we can put a grid texture in. Back down here in our render grid function, then we can say that texture, texture dot face is equal to enum dot normal ID dot top. This is just going to set it on the correct normal so that it goes on the top surface. And then of course, finally, we say that texture.parent is equal to, not is equal to, but is equal to the plot. That's all we have to do. Uh, obviously we have to set our plot thing here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna go into the toolbox and I've conveniently searched for my placement module V3. We're gonna search, uh, we're just gonna get the, what do you call it? The texture from here. And we can go ahead and delete it, go back into our placement module and paste the ID in there. So now we should have, just hit play. Uh, oh, right, we forgot to call the function. So down here, uh, I don't know, we can just do it right here. Render grid. Now it should display the grid. Oh. So we have to say texture dot texture. There we go. That probably is what messed everything up. Please work. Perfect. All right. So I'm assuming that I can just move this back. I think that's, I don't know. Okay. <laughs> Debugging right there. Okay. 
So let's just test to make sure this does work. And good, it does. Okay, so as you can see, our plot or our object isn't moving. However, we are displaying a grid, which is what we want. So now we have to work on the more math-based stuff. So this is going to be fun. But what I'm really going to do now is every time that we rotate the object, so where's our rotate function, I'm going to alternate this rotation value. So we're going to say rotation value equals not rotation value. And basically what's going to happen is say we have this part here. So initially our x and we'll call this y for now, x and y, are going to be the just normally how they are. This is the x-axis and this is the y-axis. Although you'll notice that certain times that the object is offset very slightly by about half the size of whatever size, uh, whatever axis. And so what's gonna, what we need to do is we need to re-offset it over. But by doing that, we also need to compensate for each time it rotates. So what happens is if you rotate it, now the, the x, what was the x-axis is now the y. So that's the reason why every time we need to rotate, we need to offset, re-offset the offsets, I guess. And so that's the reason why we need to keep track of whenever we're rotating. So basically you can see that whenever we rotate, we're gonna change this value so that it's the opposite. And this means that we can change the offset. So let me kind of show you what we're actually gonna do. So we're gonna set these variables here to some value. And above that, actually, before we do that, we need to set the offsets uh, to their value. So we're gonna set offset x and offset z to, and then primary dot size dot x. And then we're gonna say divided by two, but I'm gonna say times 0.5. So we're gonna take away half of it. It's the same exact thing as saying divided by two. And then for the z, uh, we can say primary dot size dot z, and then multiplied by a half. And so what these values are gonna be equal to is they're gonna be equal to mouse.hit.x subtract offset x. And then the z axis is gonna be mouse.hit.z subtract offset uh, z. And you may be saying, well, okay, well, this, we're doing this, but then how do we change it for in here? Well, all we need to do is set the offset x to what the new x will be, so this one, not y, the z, and then we swap it for here. Because remember, if we were to rotate this, this is our x-axis, but now this is our x-axis. So we need to change it. And similarly, y and our y-axis. So hopefully that makes sense. It's kind of hard to explain, but I hope that kind of makes sense. Okay, so now we have our rotation working. We need to actually think about making this relative to the plot. So this won't be relative to the plot's rotation, but it will be to the plot's position. Okay, so the first thing we can do is we can actually take uh, the stackable stuff and put it up here. So we can do this. And then in move by grid, I'm actually gonna change the snap function so that it takes in a, a C frame and snaps that instead of just a single value. This will make it a little bit easier for what we're doing uh, next. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna change this to C, we get rid of everything we had, and we're gonna create two variables, one called new X and one called new Z. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna set new Z and X to math dot round C dot X and then divided by grid size, and then the same multiplied by grid size. It's exactly the same, except we're gonna turn this into a C frame. Change the axes, and then what we can just do is return a new C frame with the new value. So new x, zero, new z. And so now, instead of get doing this, we can create a new variable called position, or pos, and we can say that this is just going to be equal to a new C frame, which is going to take in these parameters. So just these variables here that have the offset values. Then we're going to change, we're going to modify this variable. So we're going to snap, whoops, we're going to say that is, this is equal to 
<clears throat> we're going to say that this is equal to snap, and then we're going to put in the position variable. However, we're going to need to do something else to make this relative to the plot, because we want it to be relative to the plot's position. So what we can do is we can say that this, we can say local plt c frame is equal to a new c frame. And then we can say plot dot c frame dot x. We can do the same thing for all the other axes. So here we go. Change this, change that. And okay, now what we can do is we can say we're going to multiply this by plot c frame inverse. And this is basically the same thing as saying that we want to convert this to object space. So next, we're going to say our final C frame is equal to the current position that we have done calculations on, multiplied by our C frame or a plot C frame again. And then we're going to finally multiply this by a new C frame. So we're going to say C frame, and then we're going to say just our original or our offsets values offsets to make sure that it's centered on that grid now this may seem a little bit complicated but we're just dealing with relative positions here and it's a bit hard to explain but i will leave a link in the description to object in world space explained by roblox uh, at least as long as a page still exists i'll link it and link it in the description and as for here, when we don't want to snap, we can just set final C frame equal to, and this is going to be really simple. We can just say C frame, and then just our mouse dot hit dot x, uh, pos y, and then mouse whoops, mouse dot hit capital dot z. There's one extra step we have to do, and that's just to make sure that we include the y position. So we just say that final C frame is equal to C frame and then final C frame dot X, we input pos Y and then final C frame dot Z. And technically I guess we could have left this down here, but it just makes a little bit more um, cosmetic sense to move it up here before we have to do all this. So let's hit play and see if this actually works. So as you can see, something is wrong, <laughs> uh, but it's actually not the script. I'll show you why actually this is happening. But first, I'm just going to finish the script. Okay, so we didn't include rotation. So this is a bit of a problem since we want to include rotation. So this is very simple. All we can do is say times angles, which is a variable we have saved. And then we give it zero math.rad, and then we give it the rotation variable, and then give it zero degrees for there. And now we can rotate it fine, or at least we should be able to. And then I'll get into creating primary parts and stuff like that. So then we can fix what looks like more offset, even though I've said that we fixed it. So as you can see, we have this here, and it seems to be working fine with rotation and everything else. Okay, so now what is going on with that offset? Well, if we pull out our crate here, uh, I don't know why this part's here, but, oh right, that's when I wasn't explaining. So if you look at this crate, at least for me, the primary part is currently this object right here, center. And what is center? Well, if we bring that out, it's just this part here. And so we don't really want that to be the primary part because it, for one, it doesn't bound around the entire box here. And so what we really want to do is set our primary part to something that is surrounding the entire object and is as large as this bounding box here. So to fix this, what we can do is we can just create a part that's the same size as the model. As you can see here, that's what I'm doing here. Get one by one, two by two, and there we go. And I'm just going to make it invisible. And then we'll put this in the crate. I'll call this hitbox. And then I'll set the new primary part to that hitbox. Make sure everything's anchored, put it back in items. And then we will go to here and see that the offset should be fixed. As you can see, it is. And okay. 
as you can see, everything seems to be working fine. Okay. Now, let's go over some guidelines of making objects and scaling plots. So one thing is that your plot has to be a multiple of your grid size. To check if it is, what we can do is we can just type print and then your size. So in this case, 156 uh, modulus or percent, but it's called modulus, which is going to calculate the remainder. And then your grid size. As you can see, print zero. If it prints zero, that means it's fine. But if it doesn't, that means that you need to scale your plot properly. So you can just kind of see if we were to put in uh, five, we would have an offset of one. Yeah, so make sure your plot is a multiple of your grid size. And it's a good idea to have your primary part size also be a multiple of your grid size or a factor of it. So that's just so that it'll evenly be able to snap within each grid unit. So then you won't have any offsets, even with all this work that we've done here to fix offsets. All right, so let's put that in there. And yeah. All right, that's basically that. But before I'm going to do a review of my code, as I usually do. So as you can see, we have refactored our code. We've made our snap system formatted to support C frames. We have made it so that we can just call this function and get a position variable. So we can actually get rid of this. And I hopefully we didn't, good, we didn't call it down here. And in here, we create a new C frame variable. We have to offset our object's position relative to our rotation. So that's the reason why we're doing this. We're just making sure that it all always fits within the grid. This should work with any scaled, any uh, properly scaled object. Then we're going to, if we are snapping, we are going to make our C frame relative to the plot and then re offset it again. And if we aren't, we're just going to set it to our current object or our current object's position or our mouse position. And finally, we need to just make sure that our final C frame does include the Y position. So we're just doing that right here. And then finally, we return the final C frame and let the model move using this function here. Okay, so that's kind of the video. In the next video, we're probably gonna get in just to collisions and then the bound, keeping everything in the bounding box. And then in the next video after that, I'll probably do server placement. And then after that, that's really gonna be it. So hopefully you've enjoyed this series so far. If you did enjoy it, make sure you join the Discord server, give this video a like and hit subscribe. And yeah, without further ado, I'll see you in the next video.